Sun Life Financial is proud to host this roundtable on mental health in partnership with the HR Reporter. It's part of our thought leadership platform, The Conversation, which brings together leaders and experts to deliver the best thinking in group benefits, both inside and outside our organization. Participants at Canadian HR Reporter's Roundtable on Mental Wellness in the Workplace discussed how receptive the management level and organizations are of mental health initiatives in the workplace. Like bang on. I don't think you're going to have a tough sell at a corporate level. Where you need the buy-in is at the frontline supervisory management level. If you have, um, if you have team leaders or, in, say in my case, platoon leaders or whatever, who take it and go, this is another policy from HR, it's, 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 it's pointless, right? Um, a, a corporation or an agency can have the best, um, you know, the best groundwork, the best uh, programming in place. But if the people who are in a position to implement it don't, um, then it's just so much useless paper. But it goes beyond that. It's, it's moving from training, because we certainly have done a significant amount of training at the city for our staff on new policies, etc. It's about a change in approach and style that our supervisors or managers need to learn. And um, at the end of the day, you know, you become a supervisor because of your technical competencies, not because of your personal skills. And that's what we're here to talk about, is to how do you develop those personal skills so that you're, you're actually uh, supporting your staff through different periods of time in their lives. It doesn't necessarily, again, need to be about that mental illness. It can be about that personal crisis that that individual finds themselves in. And I think that's the greatest challenge with any training program, is trying to move beyond the, you know, you shall do this, as opposed to, here's the approach you need to take. We're certainly seeing the support. Um, we're hearing it from our senior team that, you know, our managers, our supervisors, they have challenges uh, working with the staff, providing the support that they need. Obviously, we need to keep people at work. Uh, they recognize the uh, additional costs of having people away from work. So they are a big driver uh, and are putting some money forward to support uh, the initiatives uh, on the mental health and uh, some additional programs. Um, we're looking at doing some additional training for our management group uh, to get that started. But it is. It is the groundbreaking. It's the start of where we, where we need to go in the future. So it is in its infancy, I think. Our participants concluded the roundtable by providing insight on how employers can develop a more accommodating culture when it comes to mental health issues in the workplace. Education, I would say, is the number one. And again, I'm, I'm going to stick with, with what I said earlier, that I really think the leadership needs to start, and the buy-in needs to start at the ground supervisory, ground management level. Um, it, I, th I think there will always be a stigma about when it comes to uh, psychological injuries in the workplace, because you can't see them, right? If you fall off a loading dock and break your foot, you, you come to work for modified duties with a cast, and everybody goes, oh, okay. Um, when I first started on the job, I hurt my back fighting with a suspect, and I was off for three days. And people had no problem going, "Oh yeah, you, oh that's 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 a pretty cool reason to be off." Um, telling people that you're off because you have post traumatic stress and you are having nightmares and flashbacks, they kind of look at their watch or look away. And and, and also beyond uh, the 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 incident that that has appeared to be as traumatic, there's that underlying day in and day out debility, debilitating condition you can develop as a result of just being poorly treated on an ongoing basis by your client groups. Oh, the cumulative stress. Yeah, that sure. cumulative issue is significant, right? Um, so I think that that's an, that's an interesting place for organizations to start to take a look at from a health and safety perspective and recognize that that in itself is a form of violence. I think of, I used to take the train back and forth regularly to Montreal and I got to know the train crews quite well. One of the biggest areas of suicide is people jumping in front of trains, and train engineers are another group that faces incredible risk of psychological health problems related to these types of events. And I'm not sure that when we do job profile, job risk assessments, we, we actually do enough looking at what are these particular risks that are present in workplaces. And there needs to be more stress on looking not just for physical risks, but for psychological hazards and risks that will occur because of them. Lawyer Cheryl Edwards says the new standard is a good place for employers to turn to in an effort to becoming more accommodating. 
background. From a legal perspective, it's certainly uh, it, it's it's novel. Uh, it's not a mandatory standard for employers, but it's certainly an opportunity that employers can take hold of to um, to further the existing processes that they have in their workplace from a safety and human resources uh, perspective, uh, working with their trade union representatives to create more robust systems um, so they can regard it as an opportunity instead of pushing back against it and saying it's certainly not not a, a, a minimum standard. And it's a, a way in which they can start to look at workplaces um, to uh, assist them in preventing the onslaught of civil uh, workers' compensation, health and safety, um, uh, human rights-related cases, complaints, and liabilities that they may face.